Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Remember to subscribe and select alerts as I'm about to start a new aviation series which isn't just about the gyroplane or for people interested in gyroplanes, it's for everybody who's got an interest in aviation. There'll be something there for everybody and it draws on my own personal private collection. Okay, back to the history of gyroplanes and part 14. In the 80 years or so, the gyroplane journey has been quite bizarre. From the initial invention and promotion as the safest form of flight to its complete abandonment post the Second World War for the helicopter, to its invention as a cheap sports aircraft for every man to get airborne, and the general feeling in most clubhouses around the country that a gyroplane equals a death trap. It's quite a remarkable turnaround, especially so with the advance in technology and material science. Still, the outlook was looking improved because finally there had been a recognition that pilot training needed to improve. There was a revised set of airworthiness regulations that meant eyeball engineering, as Peter Lovegrove would call it, would disappear, and there was an ongoing study into gyroplane dynamics, with the initial focus being upon stability and centre line of propeller thrust, as well as the tailplane or stabiliser for our American cousins. By the end of the 1990s, there were, however, two other serious technology demonstrator programmes that were based upon the gyroplane. The first by Carter Aviation Technologies, founded in 94 by Jay Carter and Paul Redding, the Carter Copter Technology Demonstrator first flew in 1998. It was a five-seater with swept wings, powered by a General Motors LS6 automotive V8. Much of the research focused upon mu, which refers to the ratio between the overall airspeed and the speed of the rotor blade tips. In flight, the highest mu achieved by any rotor craft was the McDonnell XV-1 converter plane of 0 0.95. Carter's aim was to achieve flight at mu above 1, with expectations that values of around 4 in actual flight might be possible with the aircraft at 500 miles an hour. The technology demonstrator had a jump takeoff capability and wings that gave lift beyond 120 knots. The aircraft did achieve flight with mu beyond 1. The company had a concept for a heavy lift transport heliplane comparable in size to a Hercules C-130J and a cruise of 400 miles an hour, effectively a modern day Rotodyne. The other project was by Grohm Brothers Aviation which was founded in 96 with the ambition that many have had of making a gyroplane with a more commercial focus. The flagship is the four seat Hawk 4 was originally powered by a Continental 550 piston motor and then subsequently fitted with a Rolls-Royce 250 turbine. It flew for the first time in 1999. Like many of these ambitious projects, it becomes ultimately the price tag that kills the deal. The Hawk 4 ultimately had a price tag of three quarters of a million dollars and it meant that it never gained sales traction as people just decided they'd rather go and buy a Robinson 44 or R66. They even had a more ambitious program on the drawing board which was a Lockheed C-130 transport heavily modified with jet tip driven rotor system. A configuration very reminiscent again of the fairy Rotodyne. It would retain the C-130 fuselage and wings with the Grohm Brothers concept of adding an empennage and four vertical stabilizers and a five blade jet driven rotor head. It was to give what was to be called the C 130 gyro lifter vertical takeoff and landing ability with a cruise speed of up to 300 knots over a range of 500 miles. It was in response to a Department of Defense design study concept. However, nothing has been heard of the program since. 